everybody. Happy spring from 7th Street Gifts. Me, Carissa Hun Button, and the friends and the staff at the Lawrenceburg Public Library in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. We're here for the year of tea. So this is the month of tangerine white tea for May. And this makes a really good iced tea. Now you may, you know, take it in any way you want, but I feel like for the season and everything, it makes a really great light kind of intro to summer. Uh, those first really hot, warm summer and spring days that feel so good. It's super refreshing, uh, very low in caffeine. It's palatable. The little bit of tangerine makes a lot of people like it that usually don't like teas. So that's my suggestion for your tangerine white for the month of May. Now how we've talked is that all of the teas that we're doing this year, the entire year, all come from the Camilla sinensis plant, which remember is like a shrub-like bush that originates in the eastern um, origins of the world but is now cultivated worldwide. So there's even tea that grows in North America now, tea bushes, but it's native to the eastern like Himalayans and deep deep Asia and that's where our teas come from that you take home in your um, kits. So the white tea um, does come from our Camilla sinensis and it's very 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 oh how would I say this untouched and unadulterated so it's probably one of the least processed teas that we'll have all year even more so than the greens you had. So when they pick it from the Camilla they just take it right from the tea leaf. Then the minute they do, they steam it and dry it and sort it and then turn it into your white tea. So among all the types of teas like greens, blacks, oolongs, and we'll explore more as the year goes on, this one is the least adulterated and kind of denatured for lack of a better term. So again, I just want to reiterate that all various types of true teas all come from the Camilla sinensis. So think if you take this fifth one in, even if you haven't gotten every month, just the different palettes from a black, a green to this one um, is such a huge and drastic difference. And it's just basically what happens at the hands of man, how we process it, cure it, what time of the year we pick it, but its source is all true to the Camilla sinensis. And I just find that fascinating. So this tangerine white tea has a little hint of an orange flavor, but it's technically an organic tangerine zest, which is just a dried rind that's mixed in with your tea leaves. It is slightly dry, so that's why I like it iced. It seems to do better cold than hot, in my opinion. And it has a medium body, so not super light, but not super strong, somewhere right in the middle. When you steep it and make it, you'll be able to still see through it. It'll be translucent. It won't be as dark as like a black tea or a cup of coffee. So white tea is one of the fanciest and probably most expensive teas that we've introduced to our year so far um, because it's literally hand selected. So if you can even imagine the time that it would take a human being or several, but still to hand pick and pinch off the tea leaves. Um, and then they contain a silvery white like unopened leaf tips. So when you pick them really, really freshly and new, just as they sprout or they haven't even completely unfurled, they're still almost bud-like. You've seen a lot of other um, plants in nature. They're covered in those like white silvery hairs. They're like a hairy or furry or fuzzy leaf. And that's what gives them their white um, name or color is that silvery texture. So the minute they're picked and plucked, then they're immediately steamed after picking. So this prevents any oxidation of the leaves. So I mean, they're steamed within the same day, probably within a four to five hour window. Um, and it kind of stunts it or freezes or thwarts any oxidation or changing of the leaves from that fresh picking and tries to hold them as close to that natural raw state that they can. Kind of like how we would maybe um, flash freeze produce, like you would pick a bunch of um, green beans or corn and you didn't can it but you blanch it real quick to kind of keep it um, like sealed in and preserve it and kill any bacteria or unwanted growing things and then you freeze it right away and it kind of um, I don't know blanches or sort of locks in that super quick freshness of the produce well same thing with your white tea so the delicate young leaves and buds, again, are covered with those soft silvery hairs. And that's another reason why they steam them instead of pan fry them or smoke them or cure them in other ways. 
like some of our other teas have been done, is because they want to preserve and keep those um, silvery hairs on there and not knock them off or brown them or scorch them. And again, the silvery hairs is what gives it its name of white. And again, too, this is really worth uh, bears repeating, is that white teas are the uncured in the style of green teas, and they are also very low in caffeine. So they're super, super similar to green teas, but they're actually less processed than a true green tea. It's kind of like a half of a way of a green tea. Um, and then that is what makes them lower in caffeine content compared to like our other ones. Remember our matcha that's as high as coffee and black with the curing and the oxidation increases the caffeine content. So white tea is pretty special, and when you look at your little quarter ounce here, just imagine um, the time and energy it took for a human being that, with baskets on their back to climb up these hillsides and like hand snip and pick, and then they would only pick the perfect leaves that have those silvery hairs, gather them, their baskets, drop them right in the back, take it right down, and then put them in these really cool kind of like bamboo steaming baskets and steam the leaves right away. So it's pretty special and labor intensive. For as untouched and unadulterated it is, it takes a lot of human effort and time to make it this way. So your tangerine white tea sample is in here. And what we did this um, time is we put your teas, free way to measure it, in a nice food grade wax envelope. And it's labeled. And then there's a sticker in there with the shop information if you had any questions or comments or wanted to shoot me an email, and then we dropped it down into your muslin bag. So what I would do when I get mine is my suggestion is to make one nice big 12 ounce pot. So my suggestion, you may do it how you want, is, would be to make all of this at once and then ice it and make a really nice like pitcher of iced tea. So you would open up your bag again and you would empty it, the contents of your um, tangerine white tea into it and take the sticker out of course and then discard your envelope, cinch up your bag. You could always tie it in a little nice bow or something if you wanted to be sure it didn't open. Then you would bring your tea water to a full rolling boil. And as we progress into our um, <clears throat> tea and get a little bit more advanced as the year goes on and next month with the um, tea party, we'll talk more about temperatures of water. But we're just gonna start right now with the teas and then worry about all the fundamental details as we go on. So this is just a nice rolling boil, just like you would make like your um, coffee or really anything. But then as soon as it starts to roll and boil, you would stop it. You don't want it to keep boiling, boiling. And then you're going to have your about 12 ounce teapot. That's the average size. You're going to have your white tea in the bag, un all unopened and in there loose. And then you've got it tied up. I would tie my little string to my teapot handle, pour that boiling wa water in there and then give it a few dips and then let it steep about three to five minutes. Um, and this one, because of its dryness, it, for me, it can become bitter rather quickly. So um, I don't well, I don't oversteep it. <clears throat> Some of them you can kind of let steep and get stronger and it's more just like a really robust cup of coffee or a deeper, richer um, tea that's good, just stronger. This I feel kind of turns the corner and gets a bitterness to it. So three to five minutes, five would be the maximum. And that's if you're a person who dislikes a strong cup of coffee or a stronger tea in general. But um, about three is just <clears throat> right. You could always do four in the middle and find your sweet spot. But this isn't one that you're gonna pour in your teapot and then let steep and then go switch the laundry out, the washer and dryer, because I think it would steep too long and become too bitter and less enjoyable. Um, and it doesn't really need a sweetener, but if you do with a tangerine, it seems to need less of a sweetener, less sugar, honey, or stevia, because that orange, I'm not sure why the citrus, sort of just picks up the sweetness. And um, for me, I feel like when I do add sugar to my teas, this one, I don't add as much. And you're welcome to drink it um, hot or split it into four little, um, or I mean, yeah, three, four ounce cups. That's certainly fine, but my suggestion is just with the palette and the way we have it set up this month, um, is just to make a really nice big pitcher of iced tea and sit out on your porch on these pretty days and just kind of sip it, enjoy it, and let me know. Now next month for June, it's going to be kind of a big deal, so watch for Denise's newsletter and um, promotional stuff around the library, but we're going to have an in-person tea party. 
Um, so details are coming, and mark your calendars, and I'll see you in June for that. Thanks a lot.